So we'd won the war. We'd won the revolution. The United States was a free and independent nation, but we were losing the peace. We were still governed by the Articles of Confederation. Those had been put together while Congress was on the run. Frankly, they were running for their lives. And upon further review, the Articles of Confederation seemed like kind of a ramshackle, slipshod, cobbled together sort of a thing. You see, during the war, we were so opposed to the king and his tyranny that we feared anything that seemed similar, and that included a strong central government. And the Articles reflected that. The states had all the power. The federal government had next to none. The states could print their own money, enact their own taxes, even govern their own interstate commerce. They were like little kingdoms unto themselves. And the federal government didn't have the authority to even demand money from them. I guess it took George Washington to figure things out, or at least how to get the problem solved. You see, after the war, Washington wanted to connect north and south and west all through a system of water communication, as he called it. What he meant was tying the rivers together with a system of canals that brought everyone's economy together. Washington couldn't even get Virginia and Maryland, two states that border one another, to agree on digging a canal. So we had a meeting at his home in Mount Vernon. He invited representatives from Maryland and Virginia to come talk through the problems. They couldn't solve them. So we moved the meeting to Annapolis, Maryland. That was the nation's capital at the time. There were representatives from every state. Still, we couldn't resolve the problems. The only thing we could agree on is, yeah, maybe we better have another meeting. Maybe we better discuss how can we solve these serious issues. So we decided there'd be a constitutional convention held in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Things had worked out pretty well the last time we were there. The meeting would be held in the summer of 1787. And at that meeting, the fate of the nation would hang in the balance. The representatives came from everywhere. Every state was represented. We all came to Independence Hall in Philadelphia. First thing we did was elect George Washington the president of the convention. After all, it was his meeting from the get-go. But after that, it was Katie bar the door. Some things we all agreed on, some things we disagreed on. There were different ideas from every state, different ways to get things done. There was a lot of agreement, there was a lot of disagreement. There was a lot of argument. It took us four months to put this together. The real genius of the convention, though, was the young man from Virginia, James Madison. Washington had said of him, he's 100 pounds of brain and a 10-pound body. Madison was a teeny fellow, but he had an immense intellect, and he'd heard the arguments and the ideas from all around the nation. And it was Madison who had put them together in the document we now call the United States Constitution. Many delegates agreed with Madison, with his ideas, with his concepts of government. But there were still many that disagreed with the idea of creating a strong central government. It finally took Dr. Benjamin Franklin, standing before the entire convention and saying, gentlemen, this is the best we can do. It deserves to be heard. It deserves to be put before the people. Franklin's words won the day. And on September the 17th, 1787, the convention approved the Constitution for the United States of America. It would now go before the people and the real argument would begin. Join us next time for the great debate. For more information, go to freedomfactor.org.